I pack my things and return. And remember, I sold everything. <laughs> it's just like somebody building a house. You can build house gradually, but you can't roof gradually. The roof is at once. It's either you have the money or you don't have. <laughs> But getting a car was a big problem. So I prayed, oh God, you are my father. I went for you. Give me a car now. Ah. I didn't hear anything. I prayed. I prayed. I've received gift of car before, so it's not me. So I was like, ah, he has done it before. Why not? He knows I need it now. Why would not need a car? So I prayed. And then one day, fasting and praying, I'm praying. He said to me, your membership, your pastorship did not erase your membership. Whatever they are doing to get blessed, do the same. And I'm like, ah, but I'm a pastor. As at that time, I was already 13 years as a pastor. I'm a pastor. I serve you. What are you saying? And then he told me again, so I understood the seriousness of it. And then, as a pastor of 13 years, oh, as a full-time pastor, I now started fasting and praying. Oh God, show me where to serve you. Can you imagine that kind of funny prayer? 13 years as a pastor, leading many to Christ, preaching every day, and then I have to now pray. Oh God, show me where to serve you. You see, we pastors need to be very careful. You can carry the time to and not see the blessing. Can I'm saying it with all? You can carry the time to and never see the blessing. Everybody shouting, Pastor, Pastor, Pastor. <laughs> but there is nothing pastor around you. You may 
may serve God here. Your blessings may be there. Are you following me? Those who think that God owes them something because of what they are doing are messing up, they are wasting their life. And he registered that car in a garage for two years, paid for two years service in free. Strange, strange. That is how powerful understanding is. That's how powerful. Please seek understanding. Look for understanding. Bite. 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 So that is it. Every act of God is with a purpose. And your understanding of the purpose is what opens you up to the blessings in it. Now Christmas is a celebration of the birth of Jesus. It is the celebration of love. This was when God gave his best to us. This was when God gave his best to us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only. Take note of the word only. Only begotten son. He had only one and he gave the one. So he doesn't have any anymore. Only one. Only one. This was when God gave his best. Romans 8 31 says, If he gave us his only begotten son, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Is today we came to an understanding of how far God will go for us. You who are here, how far will you go for God? How far? Somebody may be in the choir now, singing with all his heart, but one day the leader makes one statement that looks like he's targeted at him, and that's all he needs not to come again. How far will you, you as a person, go for God? How far? How far? How far? How far will you go? But this was the day God proved how far he will go for us. How far? and how much he can give to man. By giving of gifts. Why? Because we celebrate hyper giving on Christmas Day. It's a time of celebration of the love of God. The love of God. On this day he gave his very best. gave his very best. He gave to us his very best on this day. Jesus did not come to take anything from us. He came to give everything to us. When they say it's offering time, some people, that's when their heart will be shaking. And that's when some people will remember they have to go to the toilet. And they won't come back to the offering is over. Christianity is not about what you give. No, it's about God giving to you. It's about God giving to you. God is my witness. I've been a pastor 26 years. I've never looked at any man in my life and wondered what he can give me. As a matter of fact, the way I will behave, you get angry. You get angry. It's not about what you can give. No, it's about him giving to you. That's what Christ
Christianity is about. Jesus came to give. He came to give. And he has kept giving. And he has not stopped giving. And we keep giving to the end of time. Second Peter 1 3, he said he gave to us all things, all things that pertain to life and godliness. All things that pertain, all things, all, all things, all things, all things. Psalm 50 from verse 9 to 12. The Bible says that God said, the cattle of the thousand years belong to me. He said, if I am hungry, I will not call you. That is, you are too small to feed me. You don't have what I need. You are the one that needs everything I have. You are the one that needs everything I have. You are the one that needs everything I have. So he gave to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. First Corinthians 4 7 says, What have you that you did not receive? Everything we have is what he gave. Everything we have is what he gave. Second Corinthians 8 9, he said, He became poor that you might be rich. He became poor that you might be rich. You see, Christianity is all about Jesus taking your place and you taking his place. He willingly offered his place for you. It's just like somebody who is walking. He's walking at uh, Chevron. He has a big mansion that is living it in a wet housing. Are you hearing me? And then you are a teacher. In one local primary school, somebody told me that he didn't pay 15,000, I was wondering. And then, you have a little hamlet in one corner somewhere. And then, this person comes to look for you where you are, and decides to make an exchange with you. He now takes your house. He now takes your walk, and then you now take his house. You now take his walk. That's what salvation is. It's about change of position, the location. The problem with many people is this: you are used to living in a hamlet. You are used to working as a teacher. So working as Oil and gas worker in Chevron is so far from your mindset. So even though you have that new position, you are still working like a teacher inside Chevron. Are you following me? No, that's the problem of many people. And that's why you are coming to church. It's the reason you are coming to church. So that as you are coming, we are daily expounding it to you. Open your ear. You don't belong here again. Your position has changed. This is who you are now. Start behaving it. That's what coming to church is about. And we have to keep saying it every day. Saying it every day. Saying it every day. I read something in a book about an experiment that was done to a dog and a fish. This dog was tied to a tree and they put food on the floor. And they put it as far as the rope on the neck of the dog will go. So on the first day, the dog came charging at the food, only to smell the food but can't eat it because of the rope on the neck. Throughout the first day, the food was there. The dog fought and fought, no way he can get there. The following day, they brought the food again, another food again, but they noticed day after day, the desire of the dog to go for the food was reducing. It came to a, the third day when they put the food, the dog didn't even bother to go for the food at all. And then they now removed the rope 
from the neck of the dog and they blood the food, still the dog will not go for the food. The rope has left the neck, but it has not left the heart. And that's the problem with many, 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 many of us. Many of us. It's a problem. My prayer is this. As your understanding, brothers, may your eyes be open. Yeah. And may you take the things that belong to you. Yeah. So Jesus only came to give. He didn't come to take. As a matter of fact, you have nothing to offer him. He's the one who has everything to give. And he gave all to us. All to us. All to us. Now, some of the things he gave, we just look at them as we pray over them and then they are renewed in our lives and we receive them again and again. Number one, Jesus came to give us eternal life and to deliver us from eternal destruction. Adam sinned. But the consequences of the sin he committed was a price he could never pay for. Imagine you are owing a debt, but you cannot muster up enough to ever be able to pay back the debt. So you remain indebted forever. That's why I said at the beginning of the service, Satan not thought he did a perfect work. And irreversible damage. Adam did what he couldn't, the price for what he did was death. For all have sin and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 but Jesus came, he took your place, and then he paid your price. He took your place, and then he paid your price. So the price has been paid. Romans 6, 23, he says he came to give us eternal life. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. He paid the wages of sin. He paid the price for sin. And then he gave you the gift of eternal life. He had eternal life. You have a sinful life, a life ravaged by sin. So he took your place. He carried your sin. That's why God could not look at him while he was on the cross. Because God's eyes cannot be all sin. He said, my father, do you forsake me? Now, that is God could not look at him because he carried your sin. His own eternal life, everlasting life, life that cannot be destroyed. That's why now he said, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. He said, my cup runneth over. That's why, that's why, it doesn't matter who is there, I am still who God made me, you can't change it. It doesn't matter who is angry with me, I will keep getting robust, fatter and stronger. You can get angry and die, and you still can't do nothing about it. That's what Jesus gave. That's what he gave. He ended the reign of darkness and brought you into light. Number two, Jesus came to give us great joy and peace that passes all understanding. Luke chapter two, 
verse 10, from verse 10 down to 14, and the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. So great joy came with Jesus when he came. We shall be to how many people? Does it include you? And then in verse 14, verse 14, verse 14, he said, Glory to God in the eyes and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. So he came to give you joy. He came to give you peace. They call him Prince of Peace. Prince of Peace. When you get born again, you receive peace and joy for cheap. You receive peace and joy for cheap. He is the joy giver. In Isaiah 61 verse 3, he said to appoint unto them joy for money. Joy for money. To appoint unto them. To appoint unto them. When somebody is appointed to a place, most appointments, if not all, you who are appointed, you are not qualified for it. It's not your CV that took you there. It's not your CV that took you there. Appointment is you are taken from here and you are placed here. You didn't get there by yourself. It's the one who took you, who has the power to place you and he placed you there. In fact, many appointments, the people you meet there are angry with you. Uh, do you understand what I'm saying? Where did they bring him from? Nonsense. How can he come? How can he come? And he just come like that. And he just put him over us. We who have been here. We, this is that, that. But there is nothing they can do about it. Satan has done all to keep you in unhappiness. To keep you in money. He's daily doing all to keep you money. Keep you dejected. Bring you under. Make you sad. Every happening daily is targeted as stirring up anger, stirring up money. Because that's the environment that is conducive for him to keep working. But Jesus gave you joy. With joy in your heart, you are like an oasis in the desert. Everywhere is dry, but you are still wet. Joy is a fruit of the Spirit inside your heart. Inside your heart. Inside your heart. Inside your heart. I have seen some things happen in my life that is after it has happened that I now sit back to think what just happened and what informed my behavior in the midst of it. I remember one vivid experience. That was, um, is it 99 or 2000? I was um, in a city called Ugeri in Delta State that time. And um, I went to see the pastor in Wari Church. And um, while I was there, they just bought a new land. They just bought a new land and they were trying to fence that land with the other land. And then the Omonilers, you know, Omonilers are everywhere. I mean, are they not here too? Uh -huh, they are everywhere. They came, and it was a gruesome sight. They came in their land number, entered the church compound, making trouble. And then the pastor called, incidentally, there is a Navy uh, barracks in the town, and the commandant was a member of the church. He called, the commandant, and then they sent a truckload of naval personnel with guns. And these guys were shooting. And this homonilers <laughs> is as if bullet doesn't mean anything to them. Then I saw what I had not seen before. Some of them now remove their clothes, stark naked, and we are walking about in the compound. <laughs> now, 
in the midst of the shooting, poo, 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 Papa, I just was misbehaving. I, I stood. It's later I was thinking it way to. I was standing up in the midst of this thing. <laughs> I stood. And I was looking. I said, what if a snow bullet from somewhere? Normally you see something, would you run and hide? You know what that joy is for? He said, the whole world may be in tribulation. He said, but I have given you peace. That is, doesn't matter what is shaking, your inside cannot shake. So he gave you joy. He gave you peace. It's not dependent on circumstances. It's to take you above every circumstance. And then the goodness of joy is this. Joy makes you heaven compliant. It will take joy to have God. It will take joy to possess anything of God. Isaiah 12, 3. With joy will you draw water out of the wells of salvation. So he gave you joy. He gave you peace. Thereby making you heavenly relevant. Making you an ethnic conqueror. An ethnic conqueror. That's what he did. In bringing you joy. In bringing you peace. So it doesn't matter how far you are gone. How deep you are in trouble. God can still locate you inside. Because the joy on the inside is still alive. It doesn't matter what you are confronted with. You are not lost with it. You can still be located by God. And brought out by God. Because while everything around you looks dead and dying, inside you is still alive. And you are still smiling. That's what he did. There is, there is no turmoil in this life that can swallow you up. You are like Jonah. Let any fish swallow you up, it can't digest you. You are like that balloon. You know balloon? You blow air inside. No matter what you push it inside water, it will still come out. That's who you are because of joy, because of peace that he gave to you. That's who you are. That's who you are. That's who you are. I pray joy, peace, to be met again in every heart here today. Because of joy, because of peace, you can't ever be hopeless. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter what you are confronted with. You cannot be hopeless. No matter what it is, there is always a fear of there will be better tomorrow. I will wait. Tomorrow will be better. Because of the joy, because of the peace that He gave to you. And then number three, Jesus came to heal us of all manner of sicknesses and diseases. Whatever sickness, whatever disease came here with you, it will die here today. First Peter 2 24, he said, By his stripes, he, we are healed, he, we are healed. When Adam sinned, every man sinned at the same time. And when he sinned, he began to bear also the consequences of sin. One of the consequences of sin is sickness and disease. Sickness and disease is not the major consequence of sin. But when Jesus came, he took care of sin and at the same time vacated the consequences of sin. He paid the price for it. By his sight, he, we are healed. You will understand this salvation thing better when you see it as exchange. Jesus took your place. 
Now, your guest is safe, is to come and take his place. So whatever Jesus is now, that's what you are now. Whatever Jesus is now, that's what you are now. By his stripes, ye, we are healed. Ye, we are healed. You are not going to be healed. You already are healed. So take your healing now. I am strong. You don't have to pray any prayer. Just say it and stand up as we are saying it. He said, let the poor say I am rich. You don't need no abracadabra. You already are rich. He became poor that you might be rich. So he left his riches. He already has been poor. He's not going to be poor. He was poor. Poverty was that he went to the cross. He begged for water. They refused to give him. That's the height of poverty. He begged for water. They didn't give him. That's the height of poverty. To give back to him. They gave back to him in a manger. You know where a manger is? Where they keep goats. Where they keep goats. That was the only place they could give back to him. He became poor that you might be rich. He is the son of God. He could have been born in the richest family on earth. And I'm the very best. But he chose not to. Because if he did that, what will he leave for you? So he became poor that you might be rich. So he came to heal you of all sickness, all disease. He came to heal you of all sickness, of all disease. First John 3, 8, he says he came to destroy the works of darkness. The works of the devil. He came to destroy the works of the devil. He came to destroy the works of the devil. He came to destroy the works of the devil. And then number four, Jesus came to reposition us above principalities and powers that are tormenting mankind. The Bible says, Ephesians 1, from verse 20 to 21, he said, He raised up Jesus from the dead, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead, and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far and above. All principalities and powers and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And then Ephesians 2, verse 5 and 6, he said, We are seated with him in the heavenly places. Now, listen to this. I will use two illustrations to describe this to help you understand it. I said one of it yesterday, I'll just repeat it again. When Nigeria wants to play football against Ghana, who goes to play the football? Huh? Yeah. What? Yeah. Super Eagles. It will drive you to know Super Eagles is only made up of 11 players. And Nigeria is a country in millions. They say over 200 million. How true? We don't know. Are you here? And then 11 people representing 200 million. That is 11 people taking the place of 200 million people. 11 people going for 200 people. Now, if Super Eagles win Ghana 3 0, who won? Many of you who didn't even watch football, you'll be shouting it everywhere. They say, Why well, are you trying to You have Nigeria won. We won. We won. Ah, 3 0, 3 0. We won. We won. Especially if you don't see any Ghanaian around, you'll be quick to remind you, hey, we won, we won, we won. 
and if it's your friend, you make fun. We won. And then you are saying it convincingly. If the same thing that happened, you were the one who should have gone to hell. You were the one who should have been flogged with 39 strokes. It is you who should have hung on the cross. Each one of us, we are to hang on, hang on our own crosses and pay for our sins. But he took your place. Like super eagles went for Nigeria, he went for you, for me, for every one of us. He went for every one of us. So you can say, I won. And the only one says, He conquered. But you are more than conqueror. He fought the way he conquered. But you are not fighting, but you are enjoying the winning. So you are more. Now, look at this second part of it. The Bible describes salvation as adoption. That is, God adopted you. He adopted you. He adopted you. Now, what does it mean to adopt? A child born in a village. Maybe he didn't even need to know the father. Maybe he's not even sure who the mother is. And he's not sure of three square men. Even to find two in a day is a big issue. We have to lie his head to sleep is a big problem. But then you have the best mansion in town. You have all the money you could ever have. And then you decide to adopt this child. Number one, when you adopt, the name of that child changes. Nobody knows him before. But everybody knows you. In heaven and on earth, they know you. The moment you adopt him, his name becomes your name. Suddenly, somebody who is a nobody becomes somebody. The moment you adopt him, he begins to live in your house. Who don't eat two meals a day before? Now you can eat four if you want. I've never seen a WC toilet before. Now you have two toilets in this room. I've never even touched a car before, let it alone ride. Now there are hundreds of cars you can ride any. Why? Because you adopted it. Now this is what salvation is. This is the part of it that is difficult for very many people to understand. And to grab, it looks too easy. It looks too simple. Are you hearing me? This is what the Bible says when it says in Ephesians two, verse five and six that we are seated with Him. We have been adopted. We have been co-opted. Wherever He is, is where we are now. Wherever He is sitting, is where you sit. Whatever is enjoying, is what you are enjoying. That's why you can call the name of Jesus and it will answer for you. It's just like that note just adopted you. So your name changes from James, uh, James Uem to James that note. Are you following? So that name will open doors. When you get there, you say you are James Dan Botin. You say which Dan Botin? 
He said to that mother, please clear the road for him. Please clear the road for him. And in particularly if you go to any of your father's establishment, they will give you red carpet treatment. Why? Because of name. Name means authority. It is adoption that gives you the right to the name of Jesus. Are you following me? That's why you are seated with him in the heavenly places. So you carry authority. This was the day authority, Satan came under the feet of man. In case somebody working in that hotel office has slapped me before, he has slapped me before when I was still who I used to be. Now that I'm Dangote's adopted son, he will run to the toilet when I come. <laughs> Is it not the truth? Yeah. When he sees me, he will be shaking. The same thing that happened to the brothers of Joseph. Praise God. Whatever is on your shoulders is coming right under your feet. Whatever power of the enemy is tormenting your life is coming right under your feet. And then finally, he came to offer us sevenfold redemptive package. The Bible says in John 13, verse 3, that God gave all things to him. All things to him. God gave all things to him. All things to him. All things to him. So he collected all things in order to give it all to you. He collected it for you. That's why the Bible says all things are yours. All things are yours. Whatever you are looking for is yours already. It's yours already. Amen. And James chapter 5 verse 12 reveals to us the summary of those four things. It's summary in seven headings. No, no, sorry. Uh, Revelations 5 to please. Revelations 5 to Praise the Lord. Say it with a loud voice. What is the Lamb that was named to receive power? Why? Whatever you can do now is what you have power to do. But Jesus gave all power already. In case you can't do it, you will have the power to do it now. Riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessing. All of these seven things are released over your life now. How do you assess these blessings? Number one, you must be born again. You must be born again. Jesus took your place already. You now must also take his place in order to have his blessings. Getting born again is taking his place, assuming his person. That's what it means to get born again. That's why the moment you are born again, things just begin to change by themselves for you. That's how it is. And then number two, you must be spiritually minded. You must be spiritually minded. God, all of these things are spiritual blessings. They are spiritual blessings. Ephesians 1.3, he has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. You can only receive from God with your spirit. Your mind can't receive anything. Your head can't receive anything. It's your spirit. So you must maintain constant spiritual state. You must be spiritual. If you are going to get anything out of God, all things are yours. But how many become truly yours is dependent on your spiritual state. Somebody can have a bucket of water. He said, this is for you. Receive it. And then you go with your hand. Now, can you take more than your hand can take? No. But you have a bucket. You have a bucket. You can take a bucket. But if you are using hand, you can only get what your hand can carry. So, we must be spiritual to have. Because very many people put spirituality behind. Romans 8, 6 says we should be spiritually minded. And then number three, you must be steadfast in your walk with God. You must be steadfast in your walk with God. Now, God is not looking for touch and go. 
He wants a relationship with you. Those who come to church, come to God, just because of what they are looking for, they will end up disappointed. God wants a relationship. The same thing that happened at the beginning. He came down in the cool of the day, talking with Adam. It's the same thing he still wants to keep doing with us. He wants to walk with him. That's why sometimes you pray for something. You don't see it. You go back to pray again. He's deliberate. Let him keep coming. I want him to get used to me. So, if you don't have a mind of walking with God, you'll be disappointed too many times. You'll be disappointed too many times. He wants a relationship with you. He wants a relationship with you. He wants a relationship with you. Now, number four. <laughs> number four, is it? It takes your obedience of faith to assess these blessings. Yes, all things are yours, but for anything you take from God, there is always a responsibility to bear. Jesus became poor that you might be rich. As far as God is concerned, you are already rich. But having the riches demands that you give. There is always something to do. He said, let the weak say, I am strong. By your stripes, you already are healed, but you have to say it. No matter how swollen your mouth is, you must still say it. You must still say it in order for you to enjoy what he has provided. So there is a responsibility. This will be 28, verse 1. He said, if you hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord your God, then he will set you on earth. There's always a responsibility. There's always what to do. There's always what to do. Exodus 15, 26. Exodus 15, 26. He said there that if you will follow God's commandment, then he will take away sickness away from you. It will take away, I think the studio is on break. Exodus 15, 15 I said, did I not sleep? Somebody must be sleeping there. Wake up in Jesus' name. I said, if thou will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, I will do that which is right in his sight. I will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes. I will put none of these diseases on my day. Can you see that? Which I have not about in Jesus, for I am the Lord that what he led. So this is what I want to do, but this is what you must do. It's always like that. So those who are not ready. one of you from your iniquities to bless you. That's the reality of why you came. So when you think of God, you think of Jesus. Think more of what he came to give you than what you are going to give him. After all, what will you give him that it wasn't him who gave you? It's nothing. There's nothing. So what we celebrate now is a celebration of the love of God. The height of giving, the totality of giving. We celebrate, we reveal how far God will go. How far? He has already reached the end. There is no far again to go. So, no matter what is your matter, you are still coming. You have not reached where He has reached. He gave His only begotten Son. Already He gave. And how can he not with him freely give us all things? Whatever you are looking for this morning, it is yours already. Amen. If God can afford it, it is yours. Amen. So, take advantage of the moment. You are going to rise up. You are going to pray. You are going to ask God 
for that thing he wants. You have had the things he came to give. Whatever you are looking for is within it, and it's available here now. Rise up on your feet. Lift up your hand. Give him thanks this morning. Give him praise. 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 Give him the glory. Give him the honor. Magnify him. Celebrate him. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. In the name of Jesus. Now I need you to speak to God. What are you asking of God? What does he have that you know you need? Uh, Christmas is about giving. He's always giving and he's going to give this money. Go ahead, lift up your voice and pray. equal salvation. You may even be in a serving unit. If you are not born again, you are not. And God knows you are not. 
So wherever you are, you have not given your life to Jesus. Can you lift up your right hand? Either is the right or the left. Just lift up one hand. Whatever hand identifying with Jesus. Every head bow, every head knows. Identify with Jesus. I want to be born again. If your hand is lifted up, can you say with me, Lord Jesus, forgive me all my sins. This day, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Jesus, wash me clean from all my sins with your blood. Write my name in the book of life. From today, I am born again. From today, I am born again. Now, if you pray that prayer with me, pick your back, pick your Bible, quickly come to the altar here. Come to the altar here. Come quickly to the altar here. Come quickly to the altar. Come, 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 come. Wherever you are, come quickly to the altar. Hallelujah. Come quickly. Come, come, come. The choir will be leading us five minutes of celebration, please. How many of us are ready for it? You are ready for it? Five minutes of celebration, please. And we'll be praising the Lord together. Thanking Him for the death of Jesus. Thanking Him for giving Jesus to us. Come, come, if you are coming, you can stick up from Some people are here. If you are still coming, you can join them. You can join them. Come, 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 come. Come, come, come. Come, come. On this day, you are receiving a special touch. You are receiving a special touch in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, you will never go back anymore. No devil will take you away. You have come and you have come to stay. By this laying on of hands, all about you is hereby perfected. In the mighty name of Jesus, you are blessed. Go with this, man. We have some few things to stitch here with you.